All right, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to the Chupacabra Tutorials channel. I'm your host, Larry, and today we're back to talk about a lesser-known feature of VLC Media Player, which is that it is capable of converting all of your video files into pretty much any video file type that you might need. And this is a really helpful feature if, say, you're at work and you're on, like, someone else's laptop or computer or whatever, and you need to convert that MOV file to an MP4 fast because you've got a presentation in like 10, 15, 20 minutes and only MP4s will work on the boss's computer. So in a pinch, VLC Media Player, it's a pretty decent alternative to trying to spend time to either download something a bit more robust like Premiere Pro and Adobe Media Encoder, versus like, you know, finding a standalone video converter, which you might not have one at the ready or pre-vetted that you trust to install on either your computer or a work computer or a buddy's computer. So in a pinch, VLC Media Player, not a bad alternative. So all you gotta do to convert your videos with VLC Media Player is click on the media button here at the top, go down to convert slash save. You can also just hit control R and this little media window will walk you through the process. So the first thing that you need to do is tell VLC where exactly it is that the video file that you want to convert is either on your computer, on a disk, over the network, either locally or on the web, or what capture device you might be using to convert video from like your TV to a standalone file on your computer. For my purposes, I'm just gonna do a file locally on my computer, but you can also do things like just type in a URL into VLC Media Player to just pull something off of the web from like YouTube or something. And once you've got your file added, you can just drag and drop your files into this little box here or click on the add button to browse around on your computer and find it the old fashioned way. Select any subtitle files you might want to embed directly into your video and then you just got to click on convert slash save. After you click on that button, it's going to bring up the convert window, and this is primarily your bread and butter when you want to make adjustments to your videos. So obviously it's going to tell you your source video, the video that you specified in the previous window. It's going to reiterate that here just to make sure that you're not going to try to convert the wrong video. And then down here, it's going to say, yes, we're going to convert things. And you got a couple of immediate options. The first option is, I want to display the output as it's being converted. This is a really nice feature if you're concerned that whatever video that you're converting from might be corrupted or buggy or have something wrong with it. Basically what this is gonna do is that when I'm converting, it'll try to preview the video that's being converted in VLC Media Player live as things are happening. If you have an older computer or you have a slower computer, you should disable this because it might slow things down a little bit as it tries to preview things and render things at the exact same time. Then you've got the deinterlace option. This deinterlaces an interlaced video. I'm not really going to go into what interlacing is, but if you need that feature, it is available right here. It's kind of one of those things that like you look online for a guide and they say, make sure to deinterlace this thing for this reason. But if you don't have a specific reason, there's usually no reason in the modern era to worry about an interlaced video. Most video players worth their snuff can handle an interlaced video just fine. And then the last thing right here that we'll worry about is the profile. So essentially what a profile is, is these are some presets that VLC comes with so that you can select from a bunch of pre-made video presets to just select something, convert and be along and about your day faster. And these include things like just converting to a standard MP4. If you download some extra stuff, you can convert stuff to a WebM, or you can go down here and use some of their presets meant for encoding things for use on an Android device, an iOS device like an iPhone or an iPad, or even exporting directly to YouTube. Now I will say, as a fair warning, a lot of these presets are not stellar. And what I mean by that is they don't give you a lot of priority towards high quality video. So you're going to want to click on this little gear icon right here to get into some more of the nitty gritty details. 
And inside of that gear or that wrench icon is the profile editor. And what this basically means is you can directly control the video bit rates and quality presets yourself so you can ensure that you're getting the best quality video that you want for either your presentation, uploading this to YouTube, or sharing it with your family on a DVD. So the first thing that we have here is the video encapsulation type. Now, video encapsulation sounds like a really scary term, but it's not. All in video encapsulation is, is what file type do you want to create? Do you want to make a WebM? Do you want to make an MP4? Do you want to make an AVI file? Do you want to make an MP3 audio file? What do you want to make? And typically the features or the functionality of the video type you want is usually what determines what you want to use. For the sake of universal compatibility with just about every platform now, I would generally recommend doing an MP4 video, but you can definitely do stuff like an FLV video. But as you can see down here, the trouble is FLV is smaller, but it also lacks uh, the ability to embed subtitles, to embed menus, or to embed chapters like you would see if you went to like a DVD menu and said, I want to go to the part where Bruce Willis kicks a guy out the window. So each one of these video types has different limitations and different pluses, like an MKV video type has the ability to do all of this stuff. But again, some of the functionality to VLC Media Player is limited to what it can convert without downloading some additional codecs or some additional tools. If you want to use VLC Media Player as your primary video converter, you can look up some more in-depth guides to getting all of those components downloaded. Personally, for my utility, I would probably invest in a standalone video converter as opposed to using a media player, which is primarily meant to just watch videos. So the next tab is the video codec tab, and this is going to determine what encoder you're going to use to create, in this case, an MP4. And there's a bunch of different what I would call standards for MP4. It's a bunch of different like little pieces of instruction that this software gives to your computer to create the video file. The most utilized one is going to be H.264. You've also got the MPEG-4, which is a fine usage, or the VP8, which is normally only used in WebM. I will warn you, without downloading some extra, some extra bits, you can't really encode a WebM video with VLC Media Player because it will cause the player to crash. So just be aware of that. So we're just going to leave it as the standard H.264 encoding codec that's built into my computer, probably your computer, and basically any modern computer after, I think, Windows XP probably has this codec built into it somewhere. For our bit rate, this is going to depend on what you want to make your video for. I'm going to just say for the sake of argument that this is going to be a video for YouTube and a basic 1080p video for uploading on YouTube is going to have a bitrate of 8,000 kilobits per second or 8 megabits per second. It's the same thing, just different units. It's going to have a pretty decent quality, although I'm not 100% what quality rating the VLC people use. So I'm just going to say that's not used and it'll handle the quality control automatically. And then for basic YouTube settings, I'm going to say 30 FPS. And 30 FPS is the standard frame rate, the basic frame rate for things like YouTube or basically any video on the web. And that's what the 8,000 kilobits per second is for. If you want to go up to like 60, you should double check on YouTube specifications page in their FAQ section what bit rates that they would recommend that you use. Resolution is going to be what size of video you want. I'm going to leave it set to 1920 by 1080 with a scale of one, which means whatever comes into VLC Media Player, it will just leave it at that original scale. You can also upscale it to say one and a half times its regular size or twice its regular size, but I prefer just to leave it at a regular one or at auto. Auto will just take whatever you're sending in and export the same out that it takes in. And then of course you've got filters. Filters inside of VLC Media Player, you can just assume that these are the exact same thing that you would get if you're editing a photo with Instagram. This allows you to add like cool lighting effects, you can make the colors change, 
You can crop out weird black bars on the edges of a video that you're trying to rip off of YouTube. Whatever you want to do, there's probably a quick filter that you can do inside of here. However, because you don't get a very fine amount of control over these filters, I would recommend doing any video editing beyond like cropping inside of a program like Premiere Pro. The next thing we want to mess around with is the audio codec. MP4 video handles two forms of audio. You can either do MP3 audio or AAC audio. AAC audio is the more recommended audio, but for this particular form, I know for a fact that VLC Media Player out of the box handles MP3 audio a little bit better, but they're basically the same thing for purposes of like uploading to YouTube. For bitrate, YouTube accepts up to 320 kilobits per second. You want two channels, which is stereo audio and a maximum sample rate of 48,000 hertz. And if you got subtitles, you can mess around with those options here. I've never had to do that, so I'm not exactly certain what all of these do, but there's plenty of information about this online if for whatever reason you decide that you want to embed subtitles into your video. Once all of this is done, you can just hit save and then just tell the player where you want to save this file and then click on start. So for the purposes of this video, I'm just going to stick it in my video footage output file and I'm just going to click on start. Now, when this starts doing its thing, it's going to show you the video is converting by displaying it in the bottom. Oops, this got way too big by displaying it in the bottom of this video player bar. And it'll keep going until it completes and it should show you some type of live preview in the video box itself. Now, the live preview is not always animated. It really just depends on what type of file you're converting. And for the most part, I just leave that function turned off because if there is going to be some type of bizarre error that VLC Media Player encounters, it's going to pop up on the screen in a full on pop up window and tell you what exactly is going on. So you can make adjustments, change to a different video type because you don't have the proper pieces to encode that whatever it'll pop up and explain to you exactly what's going on. Otherwise, if nothing pops up, you can pretty much just assume that everything is going as it should. So this is an earlier sample that I created using VLC media player of an iOS game that I not iOS, but mobile game that I recently reviewed for my channel. And the sound is pretty good, although I have the sound turned off in this particular video clip. And as you can see, it converted this really nicely into a buttery smooth 30 FPS video. Now, I actually I think this particular sample is in full 60 FPS, but at the 8000 kilobits per second bitrate, everything looks good. The colors are correct. Everything has got the proper motion. There's no stuttering. There's no weird graphical glitches. And again, this whole thing works pretty well in a pinch. On the whole, I wouldn't really recommend using this as your day to day video converter, your day to day video encoder. I would recommend either using something like Adobe's Premiere Pro and Media Encoder or finding yourself a standalone video editor slash converter that works for you. There's a lot of them out there. They're both free and cheap. So there's a little bit of something for everybody, depending on what your needs are. But this is just kind of something that you can use as a quick fix. If you're kind of in a bind for time and you just need to convert something and then get it to the presentation, get it to your buddy's house, get it up onto YouTube, whatever, in case you happen to not have the right software on hand. So that's how you convert videos using VLC Media Player. I hope this has been helpful to you guys and gals at home. And if you have any questions or comments or anything else, go ahead and throw those down in the comment section below. I'd be more than happy to give you a hand with some of the more nitty gritty. And until next time, I've been your host, Larry. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll catch you next time.